In this session we want to talk about English law and we want to introduce the ideas behind English law. Let's start with the definition. According to Baker and Padfield, 1998, law is a rule of human conduct imposed upon and enforced among the members of a given state. It's a rule of human conduct imposed upon and enforced among members of a given state. Very simple definition, very straightforward. Keenan and uh, Ritchie's uh, 2005 The law is a set of rules enforceable by the courts which regulate the government of the state and govern the relationship between the state and its citizens and one citizen and another. It's much more comprehensive but it's really just saying that the <clears throat> the law is a way in which uh, rules are articulated, rules which govern our relationship with the state, our relationship with the government or with the legal system, and our relationships amongst ourselves. So it's a way of codifying or writing down what are our obligations and our relationships. So what is law? Well, it's a set of rules developed by different states in order to maintain order and harmony among society. If we don't have law, we'd have anarchy. We'd have the powerful bullying the weak. We would have cheating and corruption. We would have a society that would not be very nice. So we need law to bring order into our lives and into our dealings with each other. There are laws that cover every aspect of life, just about. Our working conditions, business relationships, personal relationships, the family, and even laws which oversee leisure and the pursuits of leisure. So, law seems to affect most parts of our lives. What side of the road do we drive on? Do we have to have car insurance? And um, is it right that we should pay our tax? And we have laws covering most aspects of our lives. And as I said earlier, that is to bring order into society and to ensure we are all treated equally. If laws are broken, then it's the responsibility of the courts to use its resources to enforce obedience in society. Again, if, if I decide to act badly and, and break the law in some respect, then the courts will use its resources to punish me, to catch me. The police will be used perhaps to catch me. Uh, I will be charged in court and, and I will be punished by the courts so that I don't act in that way again. And that enables all of us to live our lives um, in, in peace. We don't have to be worried about uh, antisocial behaviour or abuse or cheating or whatever. The classifications of law. Well, the development of the English legal system falls into two groups really. It's the criminal law and the civil law. And we need to have a look at both of these in this particular session. Law may be grouped into the following headings. We could have criminal and civil law, in fact. We have public law and private law. We have substantive law and procedural law, municipal law and international law. Now we'll talk about criminal and civil, we'll talk about these in, in, in turn later, but criminal law is when we uh, break one of the rules of society. Civil law is when we break an arrangement with each other, perhaps a breach of contract. We have public law, how does the, the state relate to us, and we have private law, how do we relate to each other. Substantive law, what is the law about really, what, what is it trying to do, and procedural law, uh, what procedures should be followed to ensure that the law is carried out. 
how should the courts select the jury or how should the courts um, deal with certain cases and we also have municipal law so uh, in in the UK uh, cities municipalities can pass bylaws and we also have international law we have the European Union law and we have uh, laws drawn up by the United Nations which individual states can sign up to and these will uh, have some impact on our lives as well just looking at the UK law if we draw a picture of it it would look something like that we have <coughs> the legal system and we have public law on the left the state oversees the activities and works with the citizens to maintain harmony and the public law is made up from constitutional law administrative law criminal law and then we on the other side we have private law this is really down to resolving disputes between individuals and ensuring that there is no bullying or uh, cheating or fraud or whatever on that side and this is made up from law such as contract law tort which we'll look at in a separate video property law trust family law let's go through some of these in a little more detail starting with public and private law criminal law is codes of law concerned with wrongdoings against the state and which dis uh, disrupt public peace so we have <coughs> designed laws which reflect what we want in society we do this by electing governments and the governments reflect our opinions the governments pass laws and then we have to live by the laws if some people decide not to live by the laws that is criminal they would be punished committing a crime is an offence a crime is an act of disobedience of the law forbidden under pain of punishment according to Baker and Padfield punishment can be severe, it could be death although we don't have the death penalty um, in the United Kingdom but in America it could be death or in states that still have the death penalty it could be imprisonment or it could be fines there can be a range of punishments for people who break the law it depends on the severity of breaking the law of course um, how, how, how nasty was the crime Crimes can be all sorts. Could be murder, could be theft, um, could be breach of the peace. It can be any any of the any of the laws which <coughs> can lead to criminal proceedings. Next one is constitutional law. Courts of law created to distinguish between government power an authority so we have a government but there's a law governing the government as well uh, the aim of constitutional law is to indicate hierarchy and relationships of power so who is more powerful than who else who within the government is most powerful and uh, which departments and how the departments relate to and relate to the civil service and so on so it could include things like choosing the right monarchy um, who should succeed if a monarch dies um, there has to be constitutional law there isn't a written constitution in the United Kingdom uh, it's never been written down but it's understood and the constitutional law is understood by constitutional lawyers but it's not a written document obviously the procedures are written down and the procedures to cover constitutional law are written down but it's not a, a document held as constitutional law so regarding the monarchy uh, what are the monarch's powers 
Um, there's also a relationship between different members of parliament. Um, for example, in the United Kingdom, it's possible for a member of parliament to say just about anything in the House of Commons without invoking criminal proceedings. Is that correct? Is, is that Should it be allowed? And the, where this is debated is in constitutional law. And the civil services. Uh, what's the relationship between the civil services and the public? If we have a problem with the service we were getting from the civil service, if we have a problem with uh, dealing with local authorities or dealing with government, how can we how can we get redress for these problems? How can we have our complaints and our worries dealt with? And also the government has a relationship with the local authorities and some local authorities might not want to do what the government says. So how is that played out? And that's again part of constitutional law. There's also administrative law, an aspect of law that oversees the activities of administrative agencies of government. These agencies include rulemaking, adjudication, enforcement of legislations and regulatory ag um, agencies. There is um, there is a, if you like, an agenda for the delivery of services. There is a pecking order in the delivery of services in terms of their uh, importance. But the administrative law seeks ways of which administration can be provided with certainty. So as a citizen we can look at the law, look at the legal system, the administrative law, and find out what is the procedure that the government must follow in handing down adjudication or enforcing a piece of legislation or whatever it is. There must be certainty and we're able to check what it is. Um, administrative law plays a role in decision making. Um, the government can't just make rules and laws. It must make sure that it's in accordance with administrative law that it can be done. And worldwide legislative bodies, uh, governments if you like, worldwide have tended to recruit additional governmental agencies to comply with social, economic and political demands of society. Um, it's not just government departments, but the government departments may have other agencies under them doing particular functions which people think are a good idea but those agencies are responsible to somebody else who's responsible to somebody else and it's that responsibility it's that chain of responsibility that administrative law looks after um, back to the picture we had earlier. We've now looked at public law down the left hand side. Uh, in business the one we tend to be more interested in is the civil law on the right hand side especially areas like contract and tort which we will emphasize on uh, in, in this video and in, in other videos. So let's look at private law. Civil law um, deals with the following issues. It deals with contract, uh, deals with tort. Contract is is when two parties come together and agree to do something and there are conditions for the contract to be legal. And that's dealt with in a separate video. Tort is a civil wrong that's not contract. So negligence for example would be a tort libel is a tort. Um, so torts are civil wrongs. It's when one individual can take another individual to court because of some act that they think is unfair. It's not a contract, it's just 
Uh, for example, if I said something bad about somebody, um, and I said it on perhaps on television, then I could be sued for libel. Or if I write something in a newspaper about somebody that's not true and it's bad, that person could sue me for libel. That comes under tort. Property law, uh, it's a very specialist area dealing with ownership of property, transfer of rights of property and management of property. Very specialist area. The law of succession, uh, inheritance, uh, who receives what upon the death of somebody and um, wills and again quite a um, specialist area. But it comes under private law. It's one individual dealing with another. Family law, of course, would be private as well. There are public sites, private law, if there's violence within a family, then that would be criminal. But uh, divorce and uh, agreements within families over certain, even a distribution of income or whatever it is, these are private matters and dealt with in private law. Let's look at civil law. Well, it's primarily concerned with the rights and duties of citizens towards each other. That's civil law. It's one individual dealing with another. So it almost bypasses the government, bypasses the legal system. It's one person dealing with another. It deals with disputes between individuals. Each party has the right to argue their case. The duty of civil law is to determine who is right. So if I have a contract with you for something and I feel that you have breached the contract, you're not you're not being honest, you're not living up to your end of the contract, I could sue you, take you to court and argue the case. Then some independent person, a judge, will decide whether I'm right or you're right and issue uh, fines or uh, redresses as the case may be. In civil law the, the wrongdoer is obliged to compensate the other party for any loss or disappointments occurred. That's if, if they're found to be in the wrong, if they are the wrongdoer. So civil law is individuals dealing with each other. Now let's have a look at a different area of law. Let's look at the substantive and procedural law. Substantive law is concerned with the rights, responsibilities and liabilities of individuals and governments. This is, this is the law. This is the substance of the law. So this could be in terms of public or private, but is it the substance of the law? It provides rules of law and is applied to criminal and civil cases. These rules must be considered and evaluated under different circumstances when arriving uh, at a decision concerning a case. So, substantive law is is the law. Substantive law is what is written. It's a code of conduct for us in society to follow. Uh, it is what is written down regarding our behaviour towards each other, towards the government and towards society. For example, there are laws against different degrees of murder or of sexual assault or abuse or of tort. Um, and the different types go into substantive law. So with murder it could be it could be very serious. I could have intention to kill, or it could be manslaughter, it could be an accident. It wasn't my intention, the person died. So that's what we mean by substantive. 
In substantive law, in England, a person is innocent until proven guilty. In regards to substantive law, uh, there are certain actions that take place in order for a crime to be committed. Now, for example, um, take a murder, for example. You could apply this to many, many cases, many situations. Um, there are normally various circumstances that must apply before a charge uh, will be issued against the person. There must be reasonable uh, evidence to suggest the person did whatever. So let's take an example of murder. Um, let's say you are charged with murder. Were you present at the scene of the murder? Well, if you were, hmm, th that could be an indication that you are guilty of something. It may not, but it may. Um, were you carrying a weapon when you were found? And were there witnesses? Did a witness see you do something? Were you drunk? Were you intoxicated? Uh, so take those two into account. The case against you is building. Did you like the person who was being killed? Did you know the person who was being killed? Um, if you did, and you didn't like that person, and you were found at the scene, and you've got a weapon on you that looks like the weapon that was used, hmm, a case could be built. Have you got previous convictions? Not necessarily for murder, but for something else. So substantive law would look at all of these in trying to decide whether a case could be built against somebody. And before spending money in the legal system accusing somebody of murder, evidence must be produced, a case must be built. And that case will then go through, it will then be looked at in, in the context of substantive law. Now by contrast, contrast procedural law uh, is a law designed to enforce legal rights and obligations within civil and criminal cases. Um, this is how procedures take place. This is how the law is played out. These are the rules for delivering the law. Procedural law. Procedure, procedural law illustrates the actions required to enforce substantive law and the process of how these laws should be carried out. So, you know, should a case go to court? Or if it does go to court, how should a court conduct itself? How should a jury be selected? Um, what are the, the guidelines in the court? The aim of procedure law is to treat every case fairly. The law observes evidence. It, it looks at appeals, convictions and even selecting the jury members, as I said before. So procedural law tries to get a balance to make sure everyone is treated fairly. It's to make sure that sentencing is also fair and reflects the crime but also reflects what perhaps other people have received for similar crimes in the past. So procedural law looks at the procedures of the courts substantive law is the body of law that's been applied. On a business course you would expect us to emphasize business so we will be concerned in other videos about areas like tort and contract much more than this. But uh, as an overview of the legal system that's all I really want to say. So thank you for watching.